Hi guys, and as I said in my last uh, lecture, if you had actually seen, uh, we did not go beyond continuous uniform distribution because I thought that binomial distribution really requires some time for us to get used to because uh, often I've seen that this people will try to memorize uh, or probably they will not get the idea of what the hell is happening, right? So let's start with uh, what do we mean by binomial, okay? Think about, uh, you know, flipping a coin, right? Uh, you can either get a head or a tail, right? And and if we say that the coin is normal and it has not been tampered with, then the possibility of either the head happening or the tail happening is equivalent, right? And if we were try if we were trying to do this again and again, that means if we started off, uh, you know, under some time uh, constraint, let's say we started off at t zero one, right? And let's say we flipped the coin and we got heads, right? Uh, and we repeated the exercise in the second, uh, I mean, term also, right? And let's say we got head again. And we repeated this again and we got tail again, right? The question is, uh, does getting a head in the previous trial, which is let's say on trial two, have any effect on uh, the outcome on term three? Probably not, which means that the outcomes are also independent, right? So that's what we mean uh, when we are talking about in terms of binomial distribution, uh, they have to be independent of each other, right? And there are only two outcomes. So by means two outcomes and both are independent of each other, right? So uh, hugely used in, uh, especially when you will learn derivatives in CFA level two, uh, it is used in uh, options pricing. Right, uh, but let's try to understand this uh, first logically, so that you will understand also how to use these formulas because these formulas can look pretty intimidating, uh, and there's no point trying to use the formula unless you understand how it works. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an example out here. I'm just going trying to show you this is what finally is going to look like, but this is what we're going to draw here so that we actually get it how we uh, arrive at calculating this right so this is just stock price movements across four periods right starting at t00 so at t0 you have a stock at s and then we are looking at four time periods right but we don't want to look at this chart let's draw our own chart so we understand it better okay so let's say we are at the initial point of s right the stock price is there and now the possibility there are only two possibilities either the stock can go up or the stock can go down right so every up move has a let's say a 0 0.5 possibility right let's say the probability is only 0 0.5 and the down possibility is also 0 0.5 right so you could call this an up move right so if we were to now uh, list down the various time period let's say and time period one right uh, we have another set of stock prices out here right so let's say this is s1 and let's say this is S2, just for the sake, we really don't, uh, we're not trying to do anything with those terminologies, but just trying to label it so that we can uh, later on discuss what exactly happened, right? So from out here again, uh, there's a possibility that the stock price might move again up in the second period, right? Uh, again, a probability of 0 0.5 or the stock might move down, right? And again, having a probability of 0 0.5, right? Uh, and from S2, which we went down first, there's a possibility that we might go up again. So these two intersect out here, right? Let's say we call this as S3, right? Uh, again, from time period two, let's say the stock price can either move up again to time period three, right? So let's say from here, we have uh, gone up again from S3. Uh, I'll just label this as S4, okay. So from here again, a probability of it going up is about 0 0.5. And then it can come down as well, okay, to let's say S5. And from S3 also it can go up again. So you get it that there are many ways by which this stock can go up and down, right? From S2 also this can go further down, right? So there was a down move and there's a second down move, uh, which again has a possibility of two. And from the second period again to the third period, again, this can go down further, right? 
So let's say this was S5. Let's call this as S6, right? So from S6 and S7 is possible, which is again a down move of 0 0.5, right? So you can see that there are four down moves, right? Down, 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 and there might be one more down when we move to the fourth period, right? Because we're dealing with fourth period, four periods, right? So uh, from S7, let's label this as S8, right? Now let's see what happens from here, right? Uh, from S3, again, the stock price can move down. So let's say we call this as S9. And from S6, it can go up to S9, again, which has a 0 0.5 possibility, right? From S7, now, now we've got some points out here, right? So we see that there are one, two, three, and four possibilities at time period three. But what happens after time period three? Again, there's a possibility that this might go up. So let's call this as S9. Right? So there are now in total one, two, three, four, four up moves, right? From S8, it can come down to let's say S10. And from S5, it might go up to S10, which is 0 0.5 again. From S5, it can again come down to let's say S11. And from S9, it might again go up to S11, which is again a 0 0.5. So all of these possibilities are same, but I'm still writing it. Uh, so that just becomes more legible. To understand right so from now s9 uh, which we went up there's a possibility that it might come down right uh, or it might from s7 go up okay so let me call this as s12 and from s7 again there's a possibility of coming to s13 which has a 0 0.5 possibility right so how much how many paths do we have outcomes we have one two three four and five so let's just number this one Two, the third outcome possibility after four periods fourth outcome and a fifth outcome right now let's try to also understand what exactly happened in terms of uh, the extreme moments right so if you look at the first outcome you serially had an up move four periods so you could also say it in terms of up 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 and up there are only one way by which this can reach s9 which is by serially having four up moves. And the other extreme of it is to say that sequentially we had four down moves, which is down, 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 and down. And even if you did not know a formula, right, your post probability calculation for the fifth and the first would be pretty simple. It would be just multiplying 0 0.5 four times, right? And when you do that, you get the probability of outcome number one happening as 0 0.625. Similarly, on the other extreme, you could just multiply again 0 0.5, basically just multiplying these paths probability with each other, right? And you would get the same answer as 0 0.625. So that's fine. But now look at how would you calculate manually uh, for the outcome number two, three, and four. Right? We could do that. So not very difficult. All you need to do is trace the paths. So you just need to get comfortable with uh, not getting confused while we are calculating the up and down moves. Okay. So let's look at the first uh, upper movement, which is to reach S10. There is one move which is possible from S to S1, from S1 to S4, right? from S4 to S8, and from S8 to S10. How would you try to represent that? So you would say that that is up, up, up. And then you got a down movement, right? So you got three ups and then one down movement, right? Another way of looking at it is that, see, on the other extreme, you had serially four up movements, right? So you just change that up to down and you have one variation of reaching S10. Let's look at the other possibility, okay? So let's say you did not go up, 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 down. Rather than you went up, up, then you went down and then you went up again, right? So we went up, up, which is up and up till S4. From S4, you went to S5, which means down. And from S5, you went to S10, which is up again. That's the second possibility of reaching here, right? Now let's look at other possibility, okay? So we went up, up first. Let's go up and down first, okay? So if we go from, up, from S to S1, we're basically going up. Then from S1 to S3, we're going down, right? So we've reached here. Then from S3, we went to S5, which is up again. And then from here, we went up again. 
now look at if there are any other paths to reach here okay so we could also uh, we we have explored only reaching s10 by going up first what if we go down first and then serially go up that is also possible like right? from s to s2 from s2 s3 s5 and s10 which means down and three up moves right so three and up 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 right so that's one possibility of going down first and then reaching s10 right look if there are any other possibilities of reaching out here right so let's say you went down and then you went up you could could you actually go down and then again come to s10 probably not so there are total four paths possible right now if you want to you could actually try to do this again uh, for some let's say the third variation and the fourth variation of the different paths right but let's try to understand what exactly we do and 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 you know you could just multiply these probabilities you would just get 0.625 in any case because there are only four possible uh, probabilities and the probabilities are equal right if the probabilities were not equal then it was a different thing right and if you actually multiply this with four you could actually get the same answer which the table in the next calculation will show right so let's see uh, we're talking about uh, S10, which is uh, having four outcomes, right? So look at this. Right? It's nothing but uh, four paths. Just multiply that uh, 0.0625 with four and you actually get the same answer uh, as we are looking. I mean, even if you use the formula, right? Now, what if we don't want to do that long calculation and we just want to directly calculate what exactly is going to be the probability for this outcome or this outcome or this outcome, right? So all you need to know is first of all the formula say states that uh, the probability what is the probability on an up move and a down move right so we know that the probability of let's say an up move is 0.5 say that in any case to reach s10 you need at least three successes right considering that let's say the price going up is a success so in any of these uh, you know possible outcomes you can see that there are three up outcomes right so if i were to try to put this into a formula what it means is that x is three which means the probability or or the number of successes which are required for this outcome to actually happen is three right and the number of possibilities is four right so the number of total possibilities is four you can see right so one two three four out of which three are successes and four are the number of total outcomes so it becomes very easy to calculate if we were to say that uh, you know let's say the probability of uh, you know success is 0 0.5 right and uh, how many times do we have the success so we do raise to three right we need at least uh, three successes to reach there and if i multiply that with now what is the possibility of the success not happening in this case which is one down move which also has a possibility of 0 0.5. Uh, but the number of times it has to happen is only one, right? Three, because there are only one possibility of D happening. So if you were to multiply this, basically all, all you're trying to do is, you're trying to do 0 0.5 raised to four, right? Which we already know is 0 0.625, right? 0 0.0625. And now what does the factorial do is that you if you want to really calculate the number of paths you can see that how much of a task was it to calculate you know the number of paths but it's very easy if you were to say that okay what are the total number of outcomes so there are four outcomes great uh, also considering that you are dealing with four periods so you will have four outcomes so the n would become four factorial right which is nothing but 24 and then you would do okay if uh, four factorial is the total number of outcomes uh, how many of them which means four minus three successes can be the failures and the successes would be three factorials right which means 24 uh, if you were to do three into two six and this would be one so one has no meaning so one will be one but three into two into one will be six so there are four paths possible right so 
if we were not if we had already known the concept we wouldn't have to actually go through this entire discussion but we would have known that what we did manually out here is actually done by this factorial calculation which is also given in the formula as uh, n factorial divided by n minus x factorial multiplied by x factorial and then we did this calculation right 0 0.0625 which is denoted as probability of the success right uh, raised to the probability of uh, the, uh, the success raised to x and then 1 minus the probability raised to n minus x and there you go that's how you actually estimate for a particular outcome to happen right uh, based on this formula right so you could also try to do that for s11 and s12 accordingly but i've already done that so we can just quickly check now you will understand what exactly happened right so you can see that this is what we actually found out uh, calculating uh, this as a four path and then we multiply this so we got 0 0.25 which is this one right uh, that's how you actually use the binomial uh, calculation formula which is given out here which can uh, be intimidating if you don't know exactly what is going on right? but that's what was going on and uh, it becomes very easy when you actually understand the concept right and similarly if you see out here uh, to reach for this path there are about six outcomes available right which basically means uh, s10 and s12 will be same but s11 has six paths possible right so we had four there are six ways by which you can actually reach s11 if you do this by yourself in a paper, you will understand uh, what exactly is happening. Uh, and then you will be able to estimate uh, directly using a formula also. And also you will get the logic, right? So that's, but, I mean, that's basically binomial distribution, right? And if you accumulate this, right? So you can talk in terms of a certain uh, number of outcomes, right? So if you were to accumulate from 0 0.0625 to 0 0.25, then you get the density function of 0 0.325 all you mean to say is that what is the probability till these two outcomes or in in this thing i would say what is the probability of these two sorry of s9 and s10 happening is what we are trying to say in terms of 31 to 5 with 6875 we are mean to say what is the possibility of s9 s10 and s11 happening basically just cumulating and trying to summarize the values right so that's binomial distribution, guys. Uh, very important uh, that you understand the concept, okay? That's why I almost spent 22 minutes trying to explain this because most of the students will try to either uh, skip this content altogether or maybe just try to go very shallow on this, but I would not recommend that. Okay, let's look at uh, one question which I wanted to actually show you, uh, which is actually very relevant. So let me just quickly show you. Okay, let's say this is the question that we're dealing with. Okay, if you want, you can actually pause uh, the slide and pause the video and try to solve this question. Very, very uh, relevant to what we just do, right? Now, out here, the only difference is that the portfolio outperforms its benchmark in any quarter is 0 0.75. That means success probability is 0 0.75 and failure probability is 0 0.25 which is nothing but 1 minus 0 0.75 is failure right now we are looking at uh, the question is stating that if we are talking about total four quarters or we could also call this as n because that's the number of paths possible or the number of intervals we have uh, in which what is the probability that the benchmark or the portfolio will beat its benchmark three times. So we are looking at three, X is three, three successes, right? And one failure. So since we now know the formula, it's very simple to calculate because uh, we know that it's N factorial, which is N means four, right? Factorial divided by N minus X, which is, 4 minus success 3 factorial multiplied by 3 factorial which is x right so that will give us the number of paths 
and then you multiply it with the probability of success which is 0 0.75 right and we have to do number of successes that we are looking at which is 3 so raised to 3 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.75 which is the failure rate raised to 1 and if you solve for this you should get the answer i'll not calculate this because i think you can calculate but you get the idea now what we're talking about right so i'll meet you in the next uh, video in which we'll be talking about normal distribution